Hello there, people of the Webernet. The Sheep Killer here, and welcome to a surprise bonus episode of Pokemon Leaf Green. Never thought I ended up making another one of these, but there's so much content to cover that it's happening anyway. So first thing I want to talk about is the Pokedex. Basically, without trading, you can get 171 Pokemon in your national Pokedex in Leaf Green. But in Fire Red, the number is actually 170 due to version exclusives just not being distributed equally, I guess. Off screen, it did all sorts of catching, evolving, and breeding to get this total. Another thing is the PC. There's a feature in here that I didn't know about before. And chances are you didn't either. When you press select to go into the quick select mode, you can actually select multiple Pokemon at once if you hold down A when selecting a Pokemon. Pretty cool. Like I said, I didn't know this was even a feature before Gen 5, but here it is in Leaf Green. Again with the Pokedex, these are all the Pokemon you can obtain in Leaf Green without trading. And after going through the Gen 2 Pokemon, we'll see that there's quite a big gap before we get to more because there's only two Gen 3 Pokemon, and they both come up pretty late in the decks. Now about these modes here, there is A to Z, Type, Lightest, which goes from most lightweight to heaviest, and Smallest, which goes from the shortest type to the tallest. And now, here's all the Pokemon habitats. And while we're showing these, let me talk about some other topics here. So here's something I never once mentioned throughout the series, the e-reader. The e-reader was a card reader used in some GBA games. It only saw success in Japan, so a lot of e-reader cards were only released over there including the ones for Fire and Leaf Green. It's nothing too special, all they did was unlock some extra trainer battles, both in the house with a blocked off bag exit on 7 Island, as well as trainer tower. Cool if you want some extra challenges, but kinda pointless otherwise. This is just something I figured I'd bring up because I never did before. There's also barely any info online about this, so this is all I could say about the topic. If I missed any details about it, I suppose it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, because it's virtually impossible to access this bonus content nowadays. Anyway, I'd also like to discuss the other Kanto games here. The original Red, Blue, Green, and Yellow, as well as the other remakes, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I went over a few things with the original games, and I only talked about those games when it was important. I also originally finished this walkthrough before Let's Go Eevee came out, so of course I didn't talk about those games either. If I went over every difference between all three sets of games, we'd be here all day, so I figure it's best to just keep this walkthrough to only Fire and Leaf Green. Anyways, back to the Pokedex here. These habitat lists would be filled up even further if the Pokedex had more entries, but obviously this is all we have. In all this that I've been saying so far has been post-commentary, but we'll go back to live commentary shortly. Before that though, there's a hidden item that I missed. A second leftovers. So we'll show that and then move on to another piece of content with live commentary. See you there! So yeah, just one more topic now, and that is the Fame Checker. I kind of glossed over this when we first obtained the Fame Checker, but after watching through some videos, I realized that I never really touched on it again. So we're gonna go through it in detail now. You can get info on Professor Oak, Daisy, Oak, Brock, Missy, Lieutenant Surge, Erica, Koga, Sabrina, Blaine, Giovanni, Lorelai, Bruno, Agatha, Lance, Bill, and Fuji. By seeing different pieces of dialogue of the game, they'll get added here in the Fame Checker. It's just all compiled information about every character. You can learn quite a bit about the characters by, by doing this, so it's pretty cool. Oh, and also if you press Start, this pops up as well. There's a sprite of Professor Oak right here. From Professor Oak to the Sheep Killer. Why do Pokemon compete and battle so hard for you? They, they do so because they can see the love and trust you have towards Pokemon. Never forget that. Okay, and now Daisy as well. I think this is the only time you ever see this sort of sprite for Daisy here. Because she's only ever a overworld NPC. From Daisy to the Sheep Killer. While I was comfortably enjoying my tea breaks, you've grown very skilled and powerful. I hope you'll re remain a good rival to my little brother. And now Brock here. In this big world of ours, there must be many tough trainers. Let's both keep training and making ourselves stronger. And Misty? I'm gonna keep training here at this gym. When I get better, I'd love to hit the road and travel. Lieutenant Surge? Hey kid, you electrified me in our battle. I didn't know that there were gutsy trainers like you. I'm gonna change my mind about you. Erica, I'm so glad that there are strong trainers like you. That awareness alone inspires and motivates me to try harder. Please visit me again. Koga. You and I, we must both set our sights higher and work towards meeting our challenges. But I must go train my daughter, Sabrina. The love you have towards your Pokemon. It was a power that was never bested by my psychic power. Blaine, my fire Pokemon. They'll become even more powerful. And now a quiz. How many kinds of fire type Pokemon are there? There's something that I wish to say to you. I'll concentrate solely on bettering myself and none other. Lord Lai, I needed to thank you for your help. But that has nothing to do with our battles. You better watch out next time. Bruno, the superpower of your Pokemon and you have experienced myself. Next time, maybe I should show you how to train yourself. Agatha, when you grow older, don't you dare go soft like that, Coot Oak. Be like me and keep battling on. And Lance, I'm considering going back to my hometown. I want to retrain my dragon-type Pokemon and strengthen them. I'd like to invite you to my hometown one day. Bill, I'm pretty sure this is also the only time you see his sprite, and as well as Fuji's. Hey there, 
Silio had nothing but praise for you. Hearing that makes me happy. When you catch some rare Pokemon, come show me, okay? Promise. Instead of hoping for the happiness of just your Pokemon, can I get you to wish for the happiness of all Pokemon? As we're reading these fame checker entries here, I'll have text on the screen saying where you can unlock said entries if necessary, but if it's obvious just by reading or if it's an entry you can't miss, there won't be any text. Oak Pokemon Research Lab. To make a complete guide on all the Pokemon in the world. That was my dream. Professor Oak may not look like much, but he's the authority on Pokemon. Many trainers hold him in high regard. Professor Oak reportedly lives with his grandchildren, Daisy and Scully. I hear Oak's taken a lot of interest in you, child. That old duff was once tough and handsome, but that was decades ago. He's a shadow of his former self. Professor Oak is going to have his own radio show soon. The program will be called Professor Oak's Pokemon Seminar. If you show Daisy your Pokemon, she can tell you how much it likes you. Occasionally, she'll even groom a Pokemon for you. But the person who is most liked by Pokemon is Daisy, I think. She was gently grooming Pokemon. She was a little angel. That little girl's name, I think it was Daisy. Professor Oak reportedly lives with his grandchildren Daisy and Scully. A girl from Pallet Town, Daisy. She enjoys tea every day. She visits the Celadon department store to buy some tea. The Spring Pokemon Contest's grand champion is Daisy Oak of Pallet Town, the rock solid Pokemon trainer. A rock hard will power seven, even my Pokemon. I want to all rock hard and have true grit determination. That's right, my Pokemon are all the rock type. There aren't many serious Pokemon trainers here. They're all like bug catchers, you know, just hobbyists. But Peter Jim's Brock isn't like that, not one bit. Brock is cool, he's not just tough. People like and respect him. I want to become a gym leader like him. Hi, I'm actually waiting for fossils here under Mount Moon. Sometimes Brock and Peter Jim lends me a hand. Brock rarely laughs, but is said to be unable to stop if he starts. So this is Pokemon gym leader Misty, the tomboyish mermaid. The policy is an all offensive with water type Pokemon. Misty is a trainer who's going to keep improving. She won't lose to someone like you. Strong trainers to water Pokemon are common sights in these parts. They say that Misty of the Cerulean gym trains here. The cape is a famous date spot. Misty, the gym leader, has high hopes about this place. Misty is said to worship Lorelei of the Elite Four. The Lightning American. I tell you, Kate, Legend Pokemon saved me during the war. When I was in the army, Lieutenant Surge was my strict co. He was a hard taskmaster. Lieutenant Surge was always famous for his cautious nature in the army. Lieutenant Surge installed the traps in the gym himself. He set up double locks everywhere. Lieutenant Surge is rumored to have been a pilot while home in America. He used the electricity generated by Pokemon to power his plane. Leader Erica, the nature-loving princess. I am the student of the art of flower arranging. My Pokemon are solely of the grass type. Our leader Erica might be quiet, but she's famous around here. We only use grass type Pokemon at our gym. Why? We also use them for making flower arrangements. I would never collect Pokemon if they were unattractive. Rumor has it that if you peek into Celadon Gym, you can often see Erica snoozing. The poisonous Ninja Master. Despair to the creeping horror of poison type Pokemon. Even though I've lost, I'll keep training according to the teachings of Koga, my Ninja Master. My father is a gym leader of this town. I'm training to use poison type Pokemon as well as my father. Koga is said to have a thorough knowledge of medicine. He even concocts medicine to nurse his Pokemon to health. Safari Zone's huge, wouldn't you say? Future's gym leader, Koga, patrols the grounds every so often. Thanks to him, we can play here knowing that we're safe. Safe. Saffron City Pokemon Gym Leader Sabrina, the master of psychic Pokemon. You know about a girl gym leader in Saffron City? She uses psychic type Pokemon, right? I've had psychic powers since I was a child. It started when a spoon I carelessly tossed bent. I dislike battling, but if you wish, I'll show you my powers. People say that Sabrina can communicate with her Pokemon during battle without speaking. Sabrina just wiped out the karate master next door. The hothead quiz master. My fire Pokemon are all rough and raid with intense heat. They incinerate all challengers. Our leader Blaine became lost in the mountains, but good. Night fell when a fiery bird Pokemon appeared. Its light allowed Blaine to find his way down safely. Cinnabar Jim's Blaine is quite the odd fellow. He lived on the island since way before the lab was built. It's a photo of Blaine and Mr. Fuji. They're standing shoulder to shoulder with big grins. Blaine is said to remove his dark shades only when he is thinking up new quiz questions. Team Rocket catches Pokemon from around the world. They're important tools for keeping our criminal enterprise going. I am the leader, Giovanni. Those thugs that took over our building, their boss said he was looking for strong Pokemon. Team Rocket's boss is terribly cruel. To him, Pokemon are just tools to be used. Welcome to my hideout. It shall be so until I can restore Team Rocket to its former glory. Blow me away, Giovanni was the gym leader of Radian? You. You're not Giovanni's kid, are you? No, that can't be right. Giovanni's kid has red hair. That is a reference to the rival in Gen 2, of course, who is later confirmed to be Giovanni's son. In fact, I'm pretty sure here in Fire and Leaf Green is the first time that that's outright confirmed. And then, of course, it's further confirmed in an event in Heart Gold Silver, as well as an episode of the Pokemon Generation series. I am Lorelai of Elite Four. No one can best me when it comes to icy Pokemon. We've had a great and powerful trainer grow up on this island. I bet even you'd know her. It's Lorelai of Elite Four. Known for her logical, calculated, and cool battling style, Lorelai has a surprising secret. Did you know that Lorelai has lots and lots of stuffed dolls? Every time she comes back to Four Island, her collection grows. The Lapras she has, I imagine it to be the one she met as a child. I believe it was in Icefall Cave that she caught it. 
Passed that Pokemon has been with her ever since. I'm Bruno the Elite Four. I've lived and trained with my fighting Pokemon. Bruno apparently joined the Elite Four out of his burning ambition to battle the best trainers. Bruno, who's a senior ahead of me, visits the spa on occasion. He comes to rehab injuries, both his own and his Pokemon's. He's one of the Elite Four. His name is Bruno. He went away disappointed when he found out they were all sold out of Rage Candy Bars. Even Bruno, he trained with a fellow by the name of Brawly before. I'm Agatha of the Elite Four. Agatha's ghost type Pokemon are horrifically terrifying in toughness. That old lady's also got a really short fuse too. It doesn't take anything to get that scary lady hollering. In her youth, Agatha and Professor Oak were rivals who vied for supremacy as trainers. I hear Oak's taken a lot of interest in you, child. That old duff was once tough and handsome, but that was decades ago. He's a shadow of his former self. Take Agatha, for example. She set a record for becoming the oldest ever Elite Four member. I lead the Elite Four, you call me Lance the Dragon Trainer. You know the dragons are mythical Pokemon. They're hard to catch and raise, but their powers are superior. They're virtually indestructible, there's no being clever with them. He stands for justice, he's cool and, and yet passionate. He's the greatest, Lance. We have a customer, Lance, who occasionally comes. He always buys capes. I wonder, does he have many identical capes at home? Lance's grandfather is thought to be the elder of a famous clan of Dragon Masters. From what I've heard, Lance has a cousin who is a gym leader somewhere far away. After all, Bill's world famous as a Pokemaniac. He invented the Pokemon storage system on PC, too. Bill has lots of Pokemon. He collects rare ones, too. He's my grandson. He always liked collecting things, even as a child. Bill's a Pokemaniac, so he loves every kind. Apparently, the first one he got was an Abra. Bill's hometown is Goldenrod City, where his folks still live. I've heard it is quite the festive, bustling city. Apparently, Bill simply can't stomach milk at all. He's really kind. He looks after abandoned and orphaned Pokemon. This old guy marched right up to our hideout. Then he starts ranting about how Team Rocket's abusing Pokemon. So we're just talking it over as adults. Pokemon Fame Magazine, monthly grand prize drawing. The application form is gone. It's been clipped out. Someone must have applied it already. I heard that Mr. Fuji's not from these parts originally either. The shy Mr. Fuji turned down our interview requests. He's a kindly man who was adored and respected in Lavender Town. Okay, so that is it for the fame checker. Just a quick little insert here. We're back at the title screen as well, because I wanted to show something. Right now, this is all that shows up on our thing. Continuing our save and new game. We're obviously going to click continue. It shows the previously on your quest. I don't think we've seen this in the playthrough before. Could be wrong with that, but I don't think so. Use the, the fame checker. We went to the, the Pokemon and sold for a star piece. We left Professor Oak's lab. We rested comfortably at home. And now we're here in Viridian City. Pretty cool. That's a feature. But anyway, I want to look at this. When we went here before, I put I am encyclopedia before anime as a joke like I tend to do. But if you actually put a certain thing here, you unlock a feature. A rather pointless feature nowadays, but was pretty useful back in the day. So the first word if we change I am to link, right there. And if we change the second word to together, and the third word to with, and the first word to all, if we do that, and we click OK. Oh hello, you know those words? That means you must know about the mystery gift. From now on, you should be receiving mystery gifts. Once you save your game, you can access the mystery gift. Yep, that's something that wasn't accessible until we did that. So yeah, we've unlocked the mystery gift function on the menu. So we're saving again. We can soft reset and reach that. We we'll soft reset by pressing A, B, start and select at the same time. There we go. And now mystery gift will be here. And of course, if there's no wireless adapter connected, nothing shows. But basically that was to receive special events back in the day. The mystic ticket and aurora ticket which were used for the events for Ho-Oh, Lugia, and Deoxys. Unlocking this would be how you would get those back in the day, but of course it's pointless now, like I said. The Altering Cave event also would have been accessed with that, but of course that was never released. But yeah, that's all for Mystery Gift. Another quick insert here, right in the middle of the last one, and it's about some things, more things you do on the tile screen, aside from Mystery Gift here. If you hold up, select, and B, this appears. It'll let you clear your save data, but of course we're not going to do that. If you hold down select and B without holding up, you get this. The berry program on your Pokemon Ruby Sapphire game pack will be updated. Press the A button. Ensure the connection of your GPA systems match the diagram above. So basically there was a glitch on Ruby and Sapphire where the internal battery would run dry and clock-based events could no longer occur, which also meant you couldn't grow berries. But with Fire Leaf Green or Emerald, if you do that command to get to this screen and connect the games, you'll be able to fix it. So that's pretty cool. We press A again, it shows this. Turn on the power of Pokemon Ruby Sapphire while holding start and select simultaneously, then ensure the picture above appears. And now we're stuck on this screen. So another quick insert here about another topic that I never discussed, Pokerus. Don't know why I never went over it, or at least I don't think I did. But in this game in particular, it's actually pretty interesting. As you probably know, it's a beneficial virus. When a Pokemon receives it, their EVs, or effort values, that they get from defeating other Pokemon are doubled. So what would normally give you two EVs will instead give you four. 
This virus normally can be contracted randomly after battle, at a 1 in 21,845 chance, making it rarer than a shiny Pokemon. It can also normally be spread to other Pokemon in the party for anywhere from 1 to 4 days. After that amount of time passes, the Pokemon will normally be cured of the virus, no longer being able to contract it or spread it, but it will still receive the benefits from it. You can tell if your Pokemon has Pokerus by seeing it in the Pokemon summary. There's also a special icon there for when it's cured, so you can tell that too. The Pokemon Center Nurse will also tell you when a Pokemon of yours has it, at least for the first time you experience Pokerus in that save file. The Pokemon can also keep the virus indefinitely if it's in the PC, but you'll notice that I've been using the word normally a lot. And that's because the virus works differently here. In Fire and Leaf Green, as well as Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, there is no time system, so a Pokemon will never get Pokerus in these games. The only way to get a Pokemon with Pokerus here is by trading one in for Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald. And once you do trade a Pokemon with Pokerus into one of these games, it will never be spread or cured. So that's pretty interesting. But now, back to the video. Oh, mailbox from Dante. That's a healthy jinx, be kind to it. Oh, it's mail that the, that the jinx we got from a trade was holding. Okay, I don't think I noticed that before. So I guess it's kind of cool that we ended it here, so we got to see that. I guess we'll end this where it began. And that's going to be it for Leaf Green, for real this time. And I'll see you on the next video, where we'll begin a new Pokemon Let's Play. I'll see you guys then. Happy hunting!